Welcome to Tennessee in the southeastern United States. Day or night, the state is home to all genres of music. From bluegrass to country, delta blues to rock and roll. The legendary clubs along Beale Street in Memphis were among the first to feature Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash. Nashville, the state capital, is also the capital of country music recording. But something that's frequently overlooked by visitors who come for the entertainment are the mountains and fertile plains of rural Tennessee. About 40 miles or 60 kilometers north of Nashville lies this quaint little town of Adams. Population 628. Visitors can expect to be treated to legendary southern hospitality. But this peaceful setting is better known for something sinister. 200 years ago, apparitions and horrific events tormented a local family. Even today, some descendants feel they're still being shadowed by an evil spirit. Beginning 196 years ago, bells were tormented by what they called a spirit, the neighbors called a witch, some people called a demon. In the legend, John Bell was poisoned by the spirit who calls herself Kate. Many things have been seen inside the local caves. Folks believe that spirits, orbs, even ghosts sometimes can be heard talking. I have friends who have gone out there. They can feel the presence of the witch. And when I went downstairs, I saw a ghost behind the stove. I'm convinced something very, very bad was in that house. And some believe it was trapped between two worlds, between the earth and the spirit world. What it was, we really don't know. The, the spirit was asked, where, where did you come from? Who are you and where did you come from? And he said, I am a spirit and I have been disturbed. I've been around for millions of years. It had to be something very powerful to do what it did, but it never, it never led on to what it actually was. They didn't understand why it was coming after our family. And when it was asked about why it was coming after the Bell family, or after John, and the spirit said he just needs killing. People in the area continue to claim to see sightings of the Bell Witch. They claim to hear her in the middle of the night. They hear the sounds of um, things in the house or maybe in the woods, and they will attribute that to the Bell Witch. But it's, it's supposed to be an etern eternal spirit. And, uh, you know, most people look at it as some kind of witch riding around on a broom, but that's not how it's ever described by the bells. They always describe it as a voice or an entity, and they claim they could see from time to time. Some, it, it exhibited itself as either an animal or a, or a human being. Now, the neighbors always heard the voices, but many of them said they did not see the form that it sometimes manifested according to legend. Well, you have your believers and you have your non-believers, and with that comes ex the extent of in uh, both areas. You have some that are very hardcore. Um, I, I don't believe in ghosts. I will not ever admit that there's a bell witch. And then you have the people who really believe that she existed and that she tormented this bell family for years and that she continues to torment people in Robertson County as they visit Adams. Supposedly one of the sons of, uh, Brit of John Bell had served with Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson came back and had a confrontation with this entity. Andrew Jackson had a pleasant encounter with it, but it abused people that he was with. And he, he was quoted as saying he'd rather face the whole of the British Army as to face the Bell Witch again. Well, now it showed up as several different things in the story. It was a, like a, a, a turkey, a wolf, a little girl in a swing that when Betsy tried to talk to her, she disappeared. The details of these hauntings aren't for the faint of heart. For nearly two centuries, the Bell Witch has fascinated and puzzled followers of the paranormal. Fear is constantly being evoked by fireside storytellers, books, a play, and even a Hollywood movie. According to history, John Bell's death 
was attributed to a spirit, and it's the only person I know in, in the history of the United States whose death was attributed to, to a spirit. The legend of the Bell Witch has been passed down from generation to generation in the town of Adams, Tennessee. And it's gone viral. It has all the elements of a classic ghost story, an old haunted house, furniture moving on its own, eerie sounds and strange voices that come from nowhere. It's more than enough to convince anyone their home is possessed. Let me tell you a little bit about the Bell House. In 1817, according to legend, the Bells began to experience phenomenon they called the spirit. The neighbors called it a witch, and it began to torment the family, in particular, John Bell and his youngest daughter, Betsy. John Bell had a lot of health problems, and they blamed that on the spirit. He lost his shoes at times. They just literally fly off his feet, and they'd have to retrieve them. Betsy was slapped, uh, had her covers removed at various times, had her hair tied in knots around the bedpost. Betsy seemed to be targeted more than the other children and would have experiences during the night of being slapped being pinched, her hair being torn. She would scream out in the middle of the night and the family would see to her. When visitors would come and spend the night to see if these stories were actually true, they too would experience this. John at times could not talk. It was as if he had a stick crossways of his mouth and then he would get better. This went on for about two or three years until finally on the 19th of December, 1820, John Bill became extremely sick. Uh, the doctor was called, and it was determined that he had been poisoned. They were beginning to wonder who did this. Did uh, somebody in the family poison John Bell? Uh, did Betsy do this? Did the neighbor do this? And all of a sudden, they hear the voice that they've heard so often in the house. And the spirit, as they call it, said, I killed old John. I fixed his medicine last night, gave him a big dose of it, and he'll never get up out of that bed. And John Bell died. <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that something definitely did happen. I've, I've seen a letter, a handwritten letter from 1820, the year John died, of two boys uh, riding home to their mother on their trip to see the angel at the bell house. And they were able to get to the house and the first night, they said nothing happened. And the second night it happened and said, mom, it's not an angel, it's the devil. And this is part of the legend that continues on through the years. The Bell family is still here in Robertson County, and it has a bloodline that exists till t to today. And because of that, the story just keeps getting passed generation to generation and is kept alive. Bob Bell is one of those descendants. He has no doubts his family's stories are true. Like his fifth great-grandfather, John, Bob has also been a target inside his own home. I had just gotten ready to get in the bed, and everything was quite really quiet then. And then I heard at the end of that hall, the double door slammed shut, both doors. And one of them latches, so they had to be unlatched and they had to slam them shut. And there was footsteps came down the hall and stopped at my door and the hair on my neck stood up. And me not being superstitious, I, I thought somebody was in the house. You know, I, I thought we had an intruder and I was, I was truly scared. Probably, that's probably the most scared I've ever been. So I went downstairs, I went to our gun cabinet and found a 45. I loaded it, put around in the chamber, and I had it cocked. I was gonna shoot somebody. <laughs> Cause, and I went room to room, SWAT team style, and, and took me about a half hour to go through the whole house because there's two sets of stairs. And I went back and forwards and looked everywhere in that house. There was nobody there. And I slept with the door locked, pistol by the bed, and my light on. Many people believe the Bell Witch that stalked John Bell and his family isn't just an old legend. It's still around. Other people in Adams and Robertson County also have had close encounters with the spirit. Most happen inside a network of caves once used for cold storage by farmers in the region. These dark, out-of-the-way caves can be dangerous places, but are perfect locations for paranormal activity. Cave explorers and casual visitors are warned not to enter unprepared. The most popular cave in the area is the one on the old Bell family farm. Most visitors who go there won't cross paths with the Bell Witch or any other spirit, but they could end up even worse off, cornering a wild animal in its lair. Many of our local ghost stories have begun in caves, 
voices, orbs, just about anything you can name have been supposedly heard. And a few years ago, in the last 15 or 20 years, somebody captured a picture outside the mouth of a cave here, and uh, it looked to be a woman dressed in a white dress. It showed up in the film, but it wasn't in the picture when they took it. Betsy Bell and the Bell children often played in the cave that was on their farm. They claimed at times to have had something chasing them. And so the story of a giant fish just below the cave that stirred up the water and caused the Bell children to be greatly alarmed. Uh, on a trip from the river and from the cave one day, Betsy saw a little girl hanging from the tree and she talked to Betsy and uh, told her that she shouldn't marry her boyfriend, Joshua Gardner. So caves are so important to the legend and the story of the Bell Witch in Robinson County. Uh, I was teaching a local history class for Volunteer State Community College. And the guy that owned the cave, he asked me if I had ever been to the cave, which I had not. And so we go down to the cave and we go about 250 feet back and I got up on this ledge with this gentleman to see some Indian drawings or whatever, and the lights go out. And this is 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and I have 10 or 11 history students in there. So we grope ourselves back out of the cave, and we get to the entrance of the cave. The lights come back on. Now, my son, who was let's say 79, so say about six or seven years old, I wouldn't let him go. So I made him stay with the lady upstairs. So I assumed that he, sh she had done something with the light. He said she didn't move. Pioneer and farmer John Bell is buried here in the Bellwood Cemetery, along with many of his descendants. The place is popular with tourists who come to find out more about the family tormented over nearly two centuries by the Bell Witch. But John Bell's tombstone seen here isn't original. Following an old custom at the time of his death, he would have been buried in the forest. Eventually, many of those early grave sites disappeared. I was going to try to document where people lived at the time because so much of it is, is it's destroyed. I was trying to find one person, the grave. His name was Frank Miles, and in, in the story, he plays a part uh, as being a, a neighbor, and he and John Bell Jr. were close personal friends. I walked the countryside trying to find the grave site couldn't do it. One morning, about 3 o'clock, it was in July, I woke up, I'd had a dream. And I dreamed about a small grove of trees. And I couldn't get that away from my mind. It just, I kept going right back to it. And about the middle of the morning, I thought, I know where that is. So I was, I went in this place and it's grown over with poison ivy and honeysuckle. So I cut all the uh, vegetation away and scraped the dirt off of it, and I had on a glove, and so I rubbed it off, and it said Frank R. Miles. I gently put it back down, covered it back over, and left. I thought, this is, this is not normal. At that point, I thought, you know, some things are better left alone, so just leave it alone. So I stopped my pursuit of locating where all anyone else was buried. Just, I was coming home one night and me and my kids and there was this, I don't know what it was, I can't tell you, it wasn't a cat, it wasn't a panther, it wasn't a dog, but I was driving and this animal come toward my car and it was pure black and had red eyes. That's all I can tell you. Don't know what it was. I'd never seen anything like it before. And it just kind of come toward me and then darted off and I never saw nothing of it. Our phone rang and it was my grandmother who was really distraught and she talked to my father and she wanted him to come down as soon as possible. We went into the house and I remember grandmother still holding the phone and seeing how scared she was. She said, well, I was upstairs taking a nap and I heard this crash, this loud noise. And I came downstairs and then came into the kitchen and I looked in, on the floor and all my china was on the kitchen floor. Well, 
The odd part about it was there's a butler's pantry between the kitchen and the dining room that had the china cabinet built into the wall with latching doors. And the doors came open, and all the china, every single piece, came out and crashed on the floor, not in the butler's pantry, but in the kitchen. And it was, I just remember seeing it spread just evenly, like it was just thrown out on the floor. And not one piece was broken, and it was, and it was bone china. So it was, I have no explanation of how that happened or why it happened, but it, it was uh, still unexplained by anybody today. Anybody who goes up there looking for the Bell Witch will find the Bell Witch. In the final chapters of Pat Fitzhugh's book, he talks about his visit out to the graveyard where, where uh, the family, some of the family had been buried. And he talks about ha having this feeling of a presence out there, out at the graveyard. He's not the only one. There is also some kids that had gone out there and had, had found the gravestone of John Bell, and they were bringing the dang gone thing back in their car, and they had an accident out on the main road, and they, they died in that accident. Again, the story is it was the witch that, was, uh, that, that went after them. <laughs> The legend of the Bell Witch has been detailed in some 20 books. It's the most extensively studied case of a haunted house in American history. One of the better known works was written in 1894 by Martin Ingram, a Tennessee journalist. And about three years before he wrote the book, in the Nashville Banner, he did write a letter that anybody that knew anything on the subject of the Bell family or the Bell Witch to write him letters and testimonies. And he went around the, the, the entire countryside in, in Montgomery, Robertson, and Adams, all through that area, and got a lot of information and testimonies on people that had, had heard about the legend or actually even knew the Bells. The story that Ingram tells is he got the, he got a copy of the diary that was written by Richard Bell which was, who is Elizabeth Bell's younger brother at the time that this event had occurred in Adams Tennessee Richard was about six to seven years old Richard then 20 years later sits down and decides he wrote, he wants to write a diary so he writes a diary and he titled it, My, Fam My Family's Troubles. He gives his diary to his son. His son then, about 20 years later, brings this diary to uh, Marvin Ingram with the stipulation that they could do nothing with the diary until all the family had died off. All the first generation family had died off. The closest to the legend is in Ingram's book because he interviewed people within the same um, era who were related to people who used to live in the time when the actual legend took place. A lot of folks really kind of consider the first book by Ingram kind of the Bell Witch Bible, if you will. And uh, I don't know why. I, I know the Ingram book is older. Perhaps that's why. Ingram was a very good writer. He was a newspaper publisher and he wrote in the style of his day, which was the 1890s. Sometimes a little bit prejudiced, but uh, in general, he's a very good writer. Okay, and the, and the book is basically filled on stories that happened to the Bell family, that they started hearing strange noises, and they started seeing strange animals, and John Bell would shoot at them, and nothing would happen, or they would run off. And it talks about John Bell later on being killed by the witch. Several other books follow and help feed the growing legend. Newer reports of alleged witch sightings and other eyewitness accounts win over more believers. Then, a few members of the Bell family come up with a new theory about the hauntings. In a book published in 1934, Dr. Charles Bailey Bell, John's grandson, says that his grandfather came to Tennessee from North Carolina 
under a cloud of suspicion. People like the Bell family who who were my, who were farmers, they began to move into this area because of the land and the fertilization of the land. Uh, we almost certain that they did raise tobacco. There was a church that was established in North Carolina and it moved here and primarily all the people that was in that church came here with the church. And John Bell was a member of Red River Baptist Church and he was excommunicated, which I didn't know the Baptists did, but he was. And uh, he was kicked out of the church for a term called usury. John Bell is a wealthy man, but how he comes by his fortune and conducts his business affairs raises a lot of eyebrows in Robertson County. They were a prominent family in North Carolina when they moved in here. Uh, I've often wondered why did John Bell, I think at the age of 56, if he was successful back there and had a going farm or plantation, why would you leave and move in here and start fresh again? And there's several stories on basically what he did or what he was accused of is that some say it was for sell of a horse, sell of land, sell of a slave, or something like this. He bought it from the Batts family, and Kate felt she was cheated in, in the purchase. Kate felt cheated by the Bells, and that she played a role in uh, the actual um, experience of the Bell Witch. Um, the Bell Witch actually uses a voice, which not all ghosts do and she refers to herself as Kate. And so that takes you back to Kate Batts. And we're not really for certain if Kate Batts was the witch or not, you know, that, uh, you know, she's, the witch says that she was. And basically, the, you know, this book right here was, was written by Ingram. And, um, but we don't know if he ever got to interview any of the Batts family or any of that. The ghost could be Kate. It could be Kate because this is the person that had an antagonistic relationship with John Bell. Um, a lot of people think that it, it is Kate because the ghost would use the voice and whenever she would speak, she would refer to herself as Kate. Although there is nothing to indicate that that happened. In fact, the, oftentimes they say that Kate Batts was the witch. The only trouble is Kate Batts was alive at the time. So it's not likely that uh, she had anything to do with it. And the, also, the other thing I found in research is she didn't really hold a grudge anyway. That's a, it's, it's a good question. How, the, how Kate fit into it all, since as you pointed out, she wasn't dead when these manifestations started happening. There's no evidence that she cursed him, that she felt cheated by him, that was at best a distant relative of hers. So I think this is just uh, probably pretty typical for the way legends develop. Back then, I think superstition probably played a very important role, is that in the early escorts of man or escapades of man, is that if you can't explain it, it must be something we've done to upset God, so therefore we won't do that anymore if we can find out what it was we didn't do to begin with. So therefore this is how they explain many of the actions was through superstition. The dramatic story of the Bell Witch is made to order for actors. Every year in the fall, some of Tennessee's best performers come together to recount the horrific legend of the most famous haunted house in America. Thrills and chills guaranteed. And for the play, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, we have local artists there. We have a lot of talent is in this neighborhood, a lot of talent. I hear in 2006, there was about a thousand in attendance to that play, which runs two or three weekends in a row. And this past year, in 2012, there was 
1,600 who visited, so it's really increased. They changed the story up from year to year. They have different characters in it, um, different cast members, and they'll try to focus on different aspects of the legend. And usually involves at least some of the Bell family, and occasionally they'll have a Betts family related to the Betts in, in the play. But it's so good, they're so professional. Uh, uh, We've had people come there from like maybe New York, and they say, you know, the place there are not any better than our place here. Well, curiosity seekers will come and they will experience the Bell Witch by going to the play's spirit. And whenever they go out there to Adams and watch the play, sometimes they'll have things happen to them that they will attribute to the Bell Witch. And that's why they come here in the first place a lot of times, because people are fascinated with this story. And the fact that it has gone through the years and lasted as long as it has, is just fascinating to people. And when they do come and they do experience the play and then maybe visit some of the sites, they might have some things happen to them that they might think is from the paranormal. And uh, whether it's the paranormal, who's to say? The Bell Witch legend keeps the town of Adams on the map. Recent phenomena still have people believing, and so the legend lives on. When I came being an outsider, I was a non believer. They're little vaporous orbs that can be seen. They couldn't see it was a person, they just could see some movement and a little light. But I've only been in the cave one time that night that the lights went out. And there's this lady that came and she was going to do a seance. I have no desire to go back in it. And yes, true, I am a believer. We have not seen them, but we have been told by two different people. Uh, one who was up here, uh, who had never been here before, and said, well, I saw this little cloud going from the cemetery to the, the uh, second floor of your house. And we also ran into another man who grew up on this road as a child and said he was never so scared in his life and saw the same thing. What should one make of those wispy clouds often spotted in this part of Tennessee? Fog is relatively common in the region. Great Smoky Mountains National Park is just a five-hour drive from Adams. The park gets its name from the fog that often drifts down from the high mountains. It's home to bears and deer, but no recorded sightings of a ghost or even the bell witch. So why do people claim strange things are still happening in Tennessee? Like many legends and ghost stories, they tend to morph over time, uh, especially if people have an incentive. And I'm not going to talk about any, I'm not going to make any allegations, but there's money to be made here. Marvin Ingram started a newspaper in Springfield, Tennessee, and then moved his newspaper up to, get to Clarksville. And uh, the two of them ran the paper. Thomas was the, uh, the reporter and Ingram was the promoter. Uh, they had gotten into, at that time, a kind of the liars group, and the whole thing was a, who could tell the most fantastic story. Well, you can never discount lying. People lie for a lot of reasons, and, and some people like attention, some people want to believe, so there's always that. When Marvin Ingram wrote his book, on the back part of his book, he's got a list of all the people he talked to and interviewed for this book. You have to go back to where do we even know about the story? We know about the story from Ingram. He talked to nobody who had ever been involved directly with the Bell Witch. He talked only to people who knew people who were involved. In my opinion, it could have been nothing. In my opinion, that story could have totally been made up. He never talked with uh, Elizabeth. He never talked with any of the family and never even talked with the, uh, the boy, uh, Richard Bell, who wrote the, the diary. They refused to part with the diary until Betsy was dead. And I thought to myself, that's really slick because now, with Betsy out of the picture and they give the diary, she's not there to interview, to verify, not verify. So, but again, we go back to this assumes the diary even existed. Nobody has even seen the diaries. There's no reason to believe Ingram couldn't have made everything up other than the fact that these people did exist, the Bell family did exist. 
It is reported by uh, Marvin Ingram that Andrew Jackson visited the site. Now, Andrew Jackson visited after he had just done the New Orleans, you know, the conquest down there. He defeated the, the uh, British in New Orleans. Well, the, thing, the story about him coming into town and his wagon not moving and on and on, whenever that was reported to have happened, I mean, he was president. People knew where he was, and he wasn't there. Anything that man would have done would have been written down in great detail. OK, I have searched his journals. Everybody, others have searched his journals. There is absolutely no mention whatsoever in his journals of ever having been to Adams, Tennessee, not without alone having, uh, having confronted the witch. I mean, the, the way this legend has developed, it's got a little bit of everything. You know, they've thrown in poltergeist stuff, they've thrown in witch stuff, ghost stuff, bad witch, good witch. There's religion thrown in. You know, so that's a good way to get people to believe you know, put something in there that they can relate to, and they might ignore the rest, but they'll believe the legend if it has something that speaks to them. Kids all around Robertson County and Middle Tennessee hear about the Bell Witch as they grow up. And not only do they hear it from family and friends when they're younger, but when they do enter the school system, sometimes it will be interjected into their curriculum. What I would do is I would write something on a piece of paper, as inane as it is or something like this, and the rule of the game was is that the first person in this class row read it and tried to memorize it. And then I took the piece of paper and then the rules of the game is you turn around and you tell the person behind you exactly what you read. And that went all the way around the room until the last person. Now that last person's job was to come up and write on the board exactly what they heard. It never, ever started out or ended up the same. So therefore, I said, OK, now we have established the rules for telling the Bell Witch stories. Well, found footage is a well-known technique in fiction. It's used in literature. It's used a lot in sci-fi. But the way it, things are set up is someone stumbles upon a relic, photos, diary, film, whatever, that depicts something that supposedly happened. We all know about the Blair Witch Project. You know, they found these uh, videos of allegedly what happened in the woods. We know the Blair Witch Project is fiction. But what we've got here is the diary is kind of the found footage. Of course, they didn't have videos back then. So we've got Ingram, who allegedly has this source that isn't even that good, but that's another topic. But we, unlike the Blair Witch Project, he doesn't even have the diary. Everyone has heard of a ghost, a haunted house, or a paranormal event at least once in their lives. Most of us either accept or reject the reports based on the evidence. In the case of the Bell Witch, no one can say for sure what actually happened 200 years ago near the quiet village in Tennessee. Or why sightings continue to this day. A few people have theories. Bo was in the, uh, was in the um, um, Bell Witch Cave, which is, sometimes is open to the public and sometimes it isn't. And uh, sometimes around Halloween, they used to say that they would have people to come and they'd, uh, they'd have things happening, you know, to excite people. So one time, Bo was there. He's a friend of the owner, and he was there taking some pictures back in the cave. And there's this lady that came, and she was going to do a seance with a couple of photographers and everything. and. She saw Bo in the background, but she didn't see he was a person. She thought that was a bell witch coming there while they were in there. The Bo stood back and laughed and laughed because he, he knew that he didn't want to tell him that it was just him. He didn't want to burst her bubble. One night I was staying with my grandmother. I was very young, four at most. And in my mind, 
I woke up and just felt like I had to go downstairs in the middle of the night. And when I went downstairs, I saw a ghost behind the stove. And even as a young child, I didn't think it was a ghost. It, it just didn't even make sense to me. I thought, well, that's the boy across the street. He snuck into the house and he's trying to scare me. So I started crying and ran up and got my grandmother and she came down and of course the ghost wasn't there anymore. And I remember having my head in her lap crying and her soothing me and telling me it was just a nightmare. And then the way I remember it, we went back upstairs and I laid in bed and I couldn't help but keep thinking about it. And I went down again and it was there again. Now, why did that happen? I think it was a nightmare, maybe sleepwalking, um, lucid dreaming. But my grandmother and I would talk about it over the years and I'd say, remember when I saw the ghost? And she said, Karen, it was just a nightmare. But in my mind and today, even today, it was so real. Um, and, and that's why people believe in these things. Visitors come to Adams, Tennessee from all over the world to learn about the Bell Witch. Even if they never spot an evil specter lurking in every corner of this quaint frontier town, they're bound to fall under the spell of its charm. When you come to Adams, there's a lot to see and do for a small town. Our motto is year-round country fun, and there are good places to eat. There's Adams Station Barbecue, which has excellent barbecue and home cooking and the uh, Moss's restaurant has great steaks and burgers and it used to be the schoolhouse cafeteria is what it was it is also known as the Bell Witch cafeteria at one time now we've had a few little incidents happen out here knocks and you know stuff like that uh, we got a little thing up there we stub our tickets on it come flying across the room and nobody was near it but, you know, we just told her, you know, Kate, go away, we're busy, we don't have time to food with you, so, you know. And then Red River Canoe is a um, little bit further down the road on Highway 41, and that provides camping experience and canoeing, and they have a lot of festivals throughout the year. But the Bell School Grounds has a lot of festivals year-round as well. We have the Thresherman Show in July, and, um, that's been going on for about 43 years now, every year. And they have gentlemen that um, have an old-fashioned wheat thresher and uh, a sawmill, um, a blacksmith shop, and other antique tractors that actually uh, perform the craft there. They also have tractor pulls and other activities, but um, it's neat to see the way these these craftsmen operate, you know, uh, back then. We also have the Bell Witch uh, Bluegrass Competition in September. Square dancing and bluegrass music and picking and grinning all over the grounds and um, we end the year with the uh, spirit play in October during Halloween, which tells the story of the Bell family and the Bell Witch. It is a very much attended tourist attraction, and I sold tickets to people from Australia, Sweden, Germany, the Ukraine, and they came. And how they heard about it, I not, did not know. I knew it was a local phenomenon, maybe even a national, but an international. I had no idea. The legend is very popular. It's been around for 196 years, and people come from thousands of miles, even fly from overseas, to learn about the bells. In Robertson County in Adams, we have the Bell Witch Cave, and we have the old farmland of John Bell Sr., and we have a Bell Cemetery and an old Bell School. We're going to visit the Bell Willet City of Adams Museum. We're going to visit the Bell Cabin, which is owned by the museum itself, at least part of the original Bell House. 
The building behind me is the last standing structure from the original Bell Farm. It was a cabin that was some dated to be built around 1820, and this was the time of the haunting that was going on, and this cabin was moved here on the grounds of Bell School in the early 1980s, and this cabin basically was used by sharecroppers up until the 1970s. So uh, it has quite a history unto itself. This is the place you would come to find out more about the Bell family and their spirit. On the wall, we have items that related to Adams, and especially back here in the corner, we have a picture of John Bell Jr. up high and some of the documents associated with his life. We have at least one document here uh, telling us what he had given his oldest daughter when she got married. $110 for a horse and saddle, $500 for a slave named Mary. The slaves, of course, uh, at the Civil War the, were freed, but uh, as they became adults, they were probably worth anywhere from $1,200 to $2,000. We have some stuff in the middle that related to his father and, of course, the drawing of his sister, Betsy. Uh, she seemed to be even nervous in her older age. One of her great-great-granddaughters stated that she would never sleep alone, always had a grandchild or somebody with her, and she would always sleep against the wall and let the child or whoever was with her sleep on the outside of the bed. Adams, Tennessee takes its name from the local train station built in 1859. Ever since, the town has been a popular stop for anyone with a taste for adventure. Signs of its colonial past can still be found everywhere. The riches of the cotton plantations is what attracted families like John Bell's. But it's the infamous Bell Witch who continues to draw the crowds. Well, even before the movie came, became famous, it was the stories, the folklore stories. Every, anytime a folklore booklet comes out or a new production comes out, whether it's a movie or a TV show, people will flock to Adams. They'll come to Robertson County to see if they can be a part of the Bell Witch experience. A lot of them are curious if she actually exists, and they will roam around the town and visit City Hall and find directions to some of the places that are prominent in the legend and they will try to experience it for themselves. I moved here in 1969, and basically I love the rural setting. That's where I basically came from. And that although the area has grown, we try to keep our rural setting. And, uh, you know, we will fight, basically, I will fight basically any attempts to modernize it any more than it is. Well, we have a, a great little town here, and and it's a lot like Mayberry. Uh, it's a small town feel, and the people that are in leadership in the past were had a lot of foresight in the way they planned things and tried to bring people here. And so now it's one of the biggest tourism draws in the county. You know, I think there are things that happened. And I think it's at one time, something happened a long time ago that caused the spirit to be written. It, it became a legend and it was told more and more and more. And as, as the legend grows, it gets bigger and better. You know, more people wants to know about it. And it's something that did happen, but of course it was so long ago, we can't explain it. Weird things happen in Adams all the time, but especially during the play in Spirit Week, the last two weekends of October. Come on down, you never know what you might encounter. Whenever people experience the Bell Witch and they come here, they want to be a part of it. And so they'll either drive by the cave or they'll drive by the school or the cemetery, and they may have car problems afterwards. Now, whether those car problems are from neglect or from the Bell Witch is you know, to be seen, but a lot of them will like to attribute things happening to them and experiences happening to them because of the Bell Witch presence in Robertson County. <laughs> 